Hey, this is YBR with Beeman G Drive, and today I'm going to talk about a video I made a long time ago. So a long time ago, I made a video where the goal is to reach 300 miles per hour with no mods at all. I managed to achieve that, and I figured out if you want to go as fast as possible, at that point in time, what you do is you get the drag version of the Moonhawk, and then you strip it down to be as bare as it can possibly be, so you remove all of the body, and then you go to the engine and you can make the engine better by giving it the six speed transmission and then also adding nitrous onto it. And then you go to the tuning menu and you give it as much gearing as it can possibly get so the gears are as long as they can go. And if you do this, you should be able to reach almost 350 miles per hour. When you get to that speed, the engine still got guts. It still wants to go, but the transmission is topped out. And there's nothing you can do about that because I already made the transmission gears as long as they can possibly be. And I'm starting to lose control, but this should be fine. We should still be able to reach the speed I want. So you can see the engine is still pushing it hard, but we are starting to get right near the top of this transmission. So yeah, we're starting to bounce off the rev limiter here. This is as fast as it's going to go at about 350 miles per hour. And now we're going to let this thing get all the way to a stop and hopefully not wreck it because I like to see how long it takes to come from a stop at such ridiculous speeds. That was a long stop. And this thing still looks great, except for the fact the engine's overheating, but you can't visually see that. So now we're going to come back here. And what are we going to use to beat this record? We're going to use the Wentworth DT40L. And we're going to get the Hero. So the interesting thing about the Hero is you don't have to worry about the gearing because it uses thrusters. The thrusters don't care if your gears are topped out because what happens is it just blows up the engine and it keeps going. You see, we are way past redline, it doesn't matter. And using one bus and just flooring it, we are able to get up to about 300 miles per hour. And then we're done. So how do we get another 100 miles per hour on top of that? If only we had more fuel. Well, what if there's a way to make it where we kind of have more fuel? What we're going to do is we're going to make a big fat Congo line of buses and we're going to push them all along all at once, which should allow us to reach some monstrous speeds. And before anybody embarrasses themselves by saying, well, this map isn't stock, it's a mod, it doesn't matter. I could do all of this at Grid Small Pier as well, but this map looks a heck of a lot cooler to drive on and I'm doing this for you guys out there. In fact, this actually makes things harder because I have to keep it in a straight line. If I was on Grid Small Pier, I could go all over the place and it doesn't matter. Here, I have to keep things pretty straight. I know we got a bunch of lanes in every direction, but when you're going 300 miles per hour, the car goes from one lane to the next very, very fast. So all the buses are in a line. Now I just need to save the position of each one. And one thing I had to watch out for is I had to make sure there was just a little bit of a gap between all of them so none of them were intersecting each other, which can cause some glitchiness to happen. So that should be good. Then we gotta make sure all of them have their parking brakes off. We don't want them sliding all over the place and we should be good to go. So the bus in the rear is gonna do all the thrust. Then we move on to the next bus and the next bus and the next bus. And it looks like all of them are going nice and straight so far. And I think all I need to do is just keep it going straight and steady with the bus in front. The rest of them should follow naturally. And I have to pay close attention to the speedometer. The second I see a drop, which is right there, I let go of that bus. That bus is done, and we're going to go to the bus that's behind that one. So we hit the thrusters on it, and it's like a rocket ship. We have stages on your thrusters. That's literally what we're doing with the buses. It's stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four, and then big speeds. And I'm really surprised at just how stable this can be. It's not easy to control, not even close. But the fact that you can have a line of multiple buses in a row and do something like this is just mighty impressive to me. So we're now moving on to stage three of the thrusters. We have just the bus directly behind me and we are up to 210 miles per hour and I have a full fuel tank on my rockets, 230. And the bus behind us should be running out of fuel any moment. It's done, so the thrusters go on. And let's see just how fast can we take this bus. We are already past 300 miles per hour easily. We still have half of our fuel left at 340 miles per hour. 50. This is officially the fastest I've ever gone in a vehicle without any mods. And it tops out at 375. That is so close to 400 miles per hour. We can definitely get it there, 
but it's going to require some work. Now I have two options here. Number one, add another bus to the chain. Number two, strip down the bus to the bare minimums, and then you're guaranteed to be able to make that. Now, I think it'd be a lot cooler to get 400 miles per hour with a fully intact bus, if that's possible. So that's what we're going to try first. Now, we need to bring all of the buses back into here, and they're all thrustering, making a huge mess of things. So we got to turn the thrusters off, reset them all one more time. They all look okay now. And then we need to add one more bus into the mix. So we have five buses in total. And technically, you could probably have six, seven, eight buses. It just becomes harder and harder to control it and you have to keep it under control for longer and longer periods of time. So five buses are lined up and ready to go. Position saved. Everybody have their parking brakes off. Good. Let's go. Oh man, you can really tell this thing is struggling to push all these buses and it's going a little bit sideways off the start. Maybe five buses is closer to the limit than I expected with a start like that. Oh, it's still going all crooked and the bus behind me is not properly lined up anymore. This is sketchy as heck. I think the first bus is going to die. So we'll go to the next bus. Thrusters on. Don't go crooked on me. Oh, I am so worried about this. It looks actually surprisingly straight. I thought it was going really crooked, but it just straightened itself out. The bus behind me is perfectly in line. And this is now a really nice run. I don't know when it fixed itself, but it did. So now we're just paying close attention to the speedometer once more. The second I see it drop, we'll freeze physics, and there it goes. So you go to the bus behind me, and then we gotta go to the bus behind him. So that's the correct one. Thrusters are a go. Keeping it steady, keeping it straight. This is going really, really well so far. And the engine torque has been reduced. I don't care. I don't need an engine. I have route gets. So again, the thruster should be dying at any moment. So we watch the speedometer. There it is. It's dead. We go to the bus directly behind me. Thrusters on. Find the bus I want to drive and then continue going. So we are now up to 200 miles per hour. And again, we have not used any of the thrust we have yet. So we're at 220. And I think the last one we had 230 and we kicked off. So let's see how high can this one go. 235. 240. We need a little bit more than that though. That's not going to be enough because we are more than 10 miles per hour under 400 miles per hour. So even if I keep this thing perfectly straight and don't slide anywhere, it's not going to reach 400. Unfortunately, it seems like you kind of just start to lose the benefit when you add more and more buses. It seems like the first bus might give you an extra hundred. Then the next is 50, 25, 12, 6, 3. And at that point, it's really not doing anything more if you add additional buses. So if we want to reach the maximum speed we are gonna have to strip down the buses unfortunately and I will let this guy come to a stop because again I love seeing how long does it take for the bus to come to a stop and it is a while stop you all right and now we got to make this thing as light as we possibly can and I wish it was real simple like the drag moon hawk we just remove the body but that's not the way it works for the bus because on the bus one of the parts that's connected to the body is the rockets if you remove the body you remove the rockets so we got to remove every single piece one at a time to make this thing as light as it can possibly be and there are a lot of little junk parts on this thing like these are very reasonable parts to have on a bus but when we need as light as possible these are all junk to me we don't need the mirrors we don't need the destination signs we don't need the horns we don't need all these access panels we don't even really need the engine the only reason i'm going to keep the engine in the very front bus is because if you remove the engine you don't get a speed readout so you won't know how fast you're going but the rest of them were removing the engine because the engine adds a heck of a lot of weight with it being like almost a nine liter engine that's a big fat heavy engine that we can completely remove so the setup on this one is almost complete we only have a couple more parts to remove now for the bumpers that is debatable they might help it stay straight when you're pushing it along or they might just add weight we're gonna try to remove them and if things become highly unstable we'll add them back in so this is what a super stripped down version of the bus looks like and i'm gonna do the same procedure to all the other buses but i'll also remove the engine and the brakes as well so i'll be back once i'm done with that buses are good to go and we are good to go and you notice these buses are a little more jiggly now normally you probably wouldn't notice the difference in driving also, normally, you wouldn't be driving the bus in a Congo line at 200 miles per hour. Turns out, without the roofs, 
this thing is quite a bit more difficult to control. Luckily, we only have to worry about four buses now because the last one is out of juice. So one thing we can do to make it a little bit easier though is we zoom out a ton. So we can see the whole line of buses all at once and you kind of see if one of them starts to get misaligned, I can adjust it and fix it as necessary. But right now, we got a super solid bus line going dead straight. I can't ask for anything better than this. And we should need to change buses really soon and I'm gonna do it before the last one runs out of fuel just a little bit because sometimes the transition can be a little bit jerky. This makes it nice and smooth. So now we're on stage three and there's one thing I regret is I was not paying attention to what speeds I was reaching for each stage before. I know when I release the final stage, we were at 230-ish miles per hour. And we are already at 240 miles per hour and we have a whole other stage available to us. So I have a really good feeling about this. I am like 90% certain we're gonna hit 400 miles per hour. We should be activating the final stage at close to 300 miles per hour. That is absurd and I have really, really high hopes for this. So we're watching the speedometer like a hawk, which is kind of hard to do because everything's flashing so fast and oh my goodness. So 320, still going, all right. Final stage, 320 miles per hour, and we activate it. 370, 80, 90, 400, and it's still pulling hard. Oh, the tires are blown out. Oh, but that was so great. Oh my goodness. So technically, you could probably go a little bit faster than that. If you really wanted to, you could go a little bit faster by removing the engine and using the airspeed speedometer, but I wanted to use the real legit speedometer. And I'd be willing to bet that's the fastest speed you can get using just stock vehicles and just driving. No changing the gravity, no using the node grabber, no cheating or anything like that. Just using driving skill. If you're able to reach a higher speed using a different strategy, do tell me because I would love to know how you managed to do so. And originally that was gonna be the end of the video, but I realized something. For a BeamNG drive video, there was not that much crashing and 90% of you guys seem to only care about crashing. So we're back, we're adding some crashes. We have fully bodied buses this time so you can really see the damage. And all we're gonna do is just unleash chaos basically. The first stage, just like a realistic run. But then what happens if you have very imprecise steering inputs that cause the buses to start to lose control. So you're the lead bus and you're just gonna go left and right trying to keep it straight, but you're a little too much with them, just a little too much left, too much right. And before you know it, the whole thing is out of control, sliding all over the place. And then you got the crashes going on. Buses bouncing all over into each other, pieces flying off. That's the beam and G you guys are used to seeing, isn't it? They can smash into this bus like, ugh. We still got thrust, so we could just shove him along if we wanted to. So anyways, that's going to do it for this video. Like I said, if you know the way to get a higher speed without any mods, without any sort of cheats, just pure driving, do leave a comment because I would love to know how. Uh, but until next time, this has been YBR. And remember, if you like or dislike this video, I will know. I can tell by how fast the buses can go. So do the right thing, and I'll see See you next time and here's a bonus crash.